number one overall player and number one quarterback in the 2024 recruiting class, Dylan Riola, took a visit to Georgia this past weekend. Georgia is a school that is not known widely for their quarterback play or development, but they have been excellent at recruiting and developing at the quarterback position. Their depth chart at quarterback is very impressive, and I guarantee you they are going to have a great quarterback competition this season. Let's just check out the three main guys at quarterback for Georgia. Carson Beck, four-star coming out of high school. Brock Vandegriff, five-star coming out of high school. Gunnar Stockton, four-star coming out of high school, was once ranked a five-star. All very impressive quarterbacks. All of them have legs. Stetson Bennett, who's leaving, he ran out of eligibility. Um, He was fourth in QBR this past season. He had a 161.2 passer rating. He was fourth, not fourth, sixth in passing yards with 4,127th. He was tied 18th for passing touchdowns with 27. He had 10 rushing touchdowns, 205 rushing yards, averaged 3.6 yards per carry. He averaged 9.1 yards per pass attempt, completed 68.3% of his passes on 454 attempts. The development of Stetson Bennett from 2017, when he was a walk-on at Georgia, to 2022 has been nothing short of phenomenal. And if you look at the quarterback before Stetson Bennett, I'm not talking about JT Daniels. That was a one-year thing, and that was JT Daniels' best season was at Georgia in 2020. Look at Jake Fromm before he took a nosedive in 2019, in year three of his time at Georgia, which was under a disastrous offensive coordinator in James Coley. Jake Fromm had a great 2017 and a great 2018 campaign. So despite not being known for quarterback play in the Kirby Smart era, Georgia certainly has proven they can develop at the position, they're efficient at the position, and in the case with Stetson Bennett, they can get the most out of what they have. Stetson Bennett at 5'11", 190 pounds, he's not going to be a first-round pick. Before this year, even after a phenomenal 2021 season, everyone projected that he would be, you know, undrafted free agent, maybe. Maybe, you know, spring, summer, fall camp kind of guy. Like practice squad level kind of guy. Nope. Now he's projected to be drafted. Went from a walk-on way deep in the depth chart at Georgia in 2017 transferred to a community college, then transferred back into Georgia. And now he's leaving with two national titles. He's leaving with a 29-1 and record over the past two seasons. And good luck to him off in the NFL. And I say that all to say that if Georgia can do that with a walk-on, and granted Todd Monken is departed, so... Todd Monken was one of the genius architects of Georgia's past two-year run. He came here in, in 2020, immediately revamped and improved the offense and quarterback play. Imagine what Georgia can do with Dylan Raiola. And Georgia's in the mix to sign him. It's, it's Georgia, Nebraska, Oregon, USC, Alabama. But Alabama's kind of on the fringe in a certain sense. USC, Oregon, Nebraska, and Georgia are all listed as warm. All of them are listed as warm by 24-7 Sports. The head coaches of USC, Oregon, Nebraska, and Georgia are all listed as either primary or secondary recruiters. This is how highly sought after Raiola is. He's number one according to 24-7 Sports and number one according to the composite as well. 6'3", 220 pounds, already a bigger quarterback than Stetson Bennett is, projected in the first round by national recruiting expert Chris Singletary. I'm going to read an article talking about Riola's visit to Georgia, some other things about him in this episode, and I'll link that down below. 
Five-star quarterback Dylan Raiola, the consensus number one player in the 2024 recruiting rankings, is still very interested in the defending national champion after taking another visit to Georgia over the weekend. Raiola and his family were in state to meet with the Bulldogs and notably Georgia Tech, an apparent newcomer in the conversation around the recruit. The quarterback's father, Dominic, a former Nebraska and NFL offensive lineman, had high praise for Georgia after the meeting. Georgia, quote, never fails to deliver. Quote, it was our sixth time back in Athens and it never fails to deliver, Dominic told 24-7 Sports recruiting director Steve Wiltfong. He added, we got to take in meetings and their first padded practice. Everything about that place is elite. Coach Smart is the best in the business. It's an ultra-competitive environment, and that excites Dylan. According to recruiting insiders, Riola is still taking full advantage of personal visits to the schools that have emerged as contenders for the quarterback. Nebraska, Oregon, and USC are still in the mix to entertain the player's interest. And Nebraska is the main competitor. The five-star quarterback out of Arizona was also one of the most high-profile visitors to the Cornhuskers program since the hiring of new football coach Matt Rule. He was welcomed by a familiar face once he got there. Riola's uncle Donovan is Nebraska's current offensive line coach. Oregon has also entered the fray. Bo Nix returned to the quarterback role for 2023, and as a result, I think, a large part, Dante Moore decommitted. So now after Bonix leaves, there is a wide open room for Dylan Ryle to come in one of college football's most entertaining and explosive programs. Oregon did sign Austin Novosad as a part of its 2023 recruiting class, a four-star prospect and top 10 player at the position. So they certainly did their best to replace the five-star Dante Moore, but you wonder if Dylan Raiola could overtake him. Redshirt sophomore Ty Thompson, the highest-rated quarterback recruit to Everson with Oregon, has elected to stay with the program and not transfer out, hoping he'll get a chance to take the reins. USC is currently the leader in crystal balls on 24-7 sports. They have a total of three out of the seven predictions, including one from Steve Wiltfong, the director of recruiting, with a confidence rating of six. Raiola visited USC personally, spoke with Riley, saw some Trojan spring practice, met with quarterback Caleb Williams. So highly sought after kid for obvious reasons. He passed for 3,241 yards and 32 touchdown passes and rushed for nine additional scores in 12 games as a sophomore. He completed over 64% of his passes in his throws for 2,435 yards and 22 touchdowns with five interceptions in his junior campaign. Uh, three of the four named him the number one overall prospect in the class with the exception of on three, which calls Raiola the number six player. The three main contenders seem to be USC, Nebraska, and Georgia, Steve Wiltfong, and currently most of the momentum, I think, favoring USC. On three and 24-7 view, USC is the favorite, um, and Rivals projects Georgia as the favorite. Nebraska is the close runner-up. I don't think they've really factored in USC yet, which is a poor job by them. So Georgia recruiting, as we all know, back-to-back -back national championships, before then, Georgia was recruiting still very well, at times signing the number one recruiting class, other times signing within the top five. They currently have the number one recruiting class in 2024 by a mile, an average ranking of 95.98. They have three five stars in Ellis Robinson the fourth, Landon Thomas and Demarcus Riddick, a cornerback, tight end, and linebacker respectively. They then have six four-stars, and they do have one three-star. LSU is behind them at two with 11 commits, Notre Dame at third with eight, Florida State at fourth with nine, Michigan at fifth with seven, uh, South Carolina at sixth with five highly ranked four-star commits. So George is doing exceptionally well recruiting. You even look ahead at 2025, they have four commits, two of them five stars, one four-star, one unranked commit who is a 
running back from Philadelphia, Pennsylvania. So currently number one in 2024 and 2025. Is it early? Yes, but all that momentum from winning multiple national titles, producing one of the best NFL classes ever in the 2022 NFL draft, and they're going to produce a lot more first rounders in 2023. So Georgia's chances of landing the quarterback, I'd say, are very high. I would give USC and Nebraska more favorable chances to land him, most notably because Todd Monken left. So you do have that change there, Monken leaving for the Baltimore Ravens. But we will see. It would be a huge win for Georgia landing him at that position. Georgia's quarterback room is already very, very deep. Again, with Carson Beck, Brock Vandegrift, and Gunnar Stockton. That's all I'm going to say for this video. Thank you all for watching. If you liked it, please subscribe to the channel. Comment who you think Riola will eventually enroll at down below. And if you're listening to Spotify, please follow the channel. Have a great day, guys.